What's good, YouTube? Nappy Boy 92 here, back again, once again. And today, people, today I'm gonna be guest commentating a Pokemon Black and White 2 Wi-Fi battle for you guys on Elena's channel between herself and Matt's LP Adventures. Make sure you check out his channel below. His link will be in the description. Now, I am somewhat new to Wi-Fi battles myself, so I may not be up to date on all of the technical terms. But either way, this should be a ton of fun. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna go ahead and get started. The battle has begun. It's should be interesting to see who both teams use as their starting Pokemon to lead this battle. Matt is going to go ahead and throw out his Amber Palm, and Elena is going to lead with her Bronzong as well. Interesting because you don't see either one of these Pokemon that often. You know, you don't see them every single day. They're not normal Pokemon that you run into, especially Amber Palm. But either way, Amber Palm is going to lead with a Fake Out. Fake Out is known to cause your opponent to flinch as it did to Bronzong, but no worries. Bronzong does have his leftovers to restore some of that health. It's unfortunate because Elena couldn't get that initial attack off because of Fake Out, but I don't think she's going to be uh, too worried about that. As you see, she uses Stealth Rock. She's really planning ahead in this battle. Uh, not necessarily trying to hit Amber Palm hard right now, but rather plan for the next Pokemon and the Pokemon after that because Stealth Rock does do damage to any Pokemon that switches onto the field. Now, Amber Palm is going to go ahead and use a series of returns here. Again, just trying to whittle down the high defense that Bronzong has. But no worries again as Bronzong hits back hard with a Zen Headbutt, which is actually rather effective, taking away more than half of Amber Palm's health and still just chugging along hard with that leftovers there, restoring that health here and there. Amber Palm is going to continue to whittle away at Bronzong's health with another return, but at the end of the day, I do believe Bronzong says he's had enough of that, and Elena just uses an iron head to just poop all over that amp. <laughs> Anyways, moving on, Bronzong is the victor in that initial matchup. Matthew is going to go ahead and send out a Typhlosion. A uh, decent amount of damage is taken away from Typhlosion's health initially from that Stealth Rock, and Elena withdraws that Bronzong and sends out Vaporeon, obvious victor in this matchup, Typhlosion uses Eruption, a very strong fire uh, attack which could have dealt some decent damage to Bronzong but instead it does very little to the water type Vaporeon. Of course in this matchup Vaporeon does have the type advantage and knowing that Matthew goes ahead and withdraws his Typhlosion and sends out his Angry Bat. Angry Bat is Crobat as you all can see, Stealth Rock again digs into Crobat's health initially. Muddy Water from Vaporeon, again, similar to Eruption from earlier, would have dealt a lot of damage to Typhlosion, possibly knocking him out all the way, but Angry Bat does withstand the hit, not knocking him out all the way. He does withstand the hit, and his Black Sludge restores some health, as well as Vaporeon appears to be using leftovers as well. Crobat with a surprising, I wouldn't say necessarily so surprising, but Crobat does end up using Hypnosis and putting Vaporeon to sleep. That's not really all that great for Elena in this situation, as Angry Bat continues to restore its health using some Black Sludge. Vaporeon can luckily restore its health as well using Leftovers as well. Elena ends up withdrawing Vaporeon, very smart, especially since she's asleep. She can't really do much, and she goes ahead and brings out the initial Bronzong again. Bronzong withstands the first air cutter attack from Angry Bat, Angry Bat aka Crobat. It's going to be a little difficult for me to jump back and forth between the two of them, but it doesn't really do all that much damage. Crobat leading again with a U-turn. It's just Bronzong is just that defensive beast, just that powerhouse, just taking hit after hit after hit. So knowing that, Matthew goes ahead withdraws his Crobat and pulls out a shiny Dragonite. Interesting to see, Dragonite's easily one of my top five favorite Pokemon, so I'm happy to see him in this battle here. It is a shiny Dragonite, as you can see, the skin is green, the wings are pink. It's nice to see that in the Wi-Fi battle every once in a while. <laughs> nice shiny Pokemon. Uh, Dragonite does go ahead and hit hard, very hard actually, knocking out Bronzong with a flamethrower. Um, it's, it's, it's caught me off guard, to be honest. Bronzong is out of the battle completely right now. Uh, Elena's gonna go ahead and whip out a Zeep Striker. Keep in mind, Vaporeon is still asleep at this point. Zeep Striker's gonna go ahead and use a Hidden Power. Hidden Power is always one of those moves that I was never really all that fond of. But, either way, it does go ahead and pull the clutch for Elena and Zeep Striker in this situation. Knocking out the Shiny Dragonite. Bye-bye, Dragonite. You're still one of my favorites. 
favorites out there. Anyways, Matthew rebuttals really fast with a Sinchino. Sinchino again takes damage from Stealth Rock. Stealth Rock was an incredibly smart move from Elena to, to start the battle off with, with that uh, Bronzong, which fortunately is no longer with us. But still, it was an incredibly smart move to uh, go ahead and use because it just it's going to damage and just boil down that health for every new Pokemon that Matthew pulls out. But, Sinchino's gonna go ahead and hit hard with a Rock Blast, almost whittling away all of Zeep Striker's health, but Zeep Striker is going to return the favor with a Volt Switch. Volt Switch is actually one of my favorite electric type moves to date, and it is enough to actually knock Sinchino out. Just proving that no matter how cute and cuddly your Pokemon is, you can't take the heat, it's gonna get steamrolled over. So, <laughs> Elena's gonna go ahead and withdraw her Zeep Striker and send out a Bouffalant. Matthew's gonna actually send out one of my favorite fifth generation Pokemon, Braviary. Not really sure why he's my favorite he's just like big and bad and uh, I don't know <laughs> anyways Bouflon's gonna go ahead and lead with a stone edge and it actually is enough to take out Braviary <sighs> gotta eat my own words I, I, I love Braviary but he just couldn't take the heat in that situation so <laughs> anyways Elena's gonna come out on top in that one as well Bouflon's gonna take a little bit of hit to his HP and we see Crobat return once again and he takes damage for the second time actually from that stone edge that Alana set up again initially in the beginning of the battle. Crobat is however just chilling in the red zone. That black sludge though has played in his favor a lot coupled with that speed as well. Black sludge pulls Crobat out of the red zone. That speed again comes into play here with that air cutter. Zeep Striker actually flinches and can't move and again I feel like I've said black sludge 900 times already but you see the black sludge again there restoring some of his health. Unfortunately for Zeep Striker, the speed behind Crobat and his Air Slash was just too much, and Zeep Striker's not even in the red zone anymore. He's just flat out on his ass. Anyways, <laughs> Crobat's gonna restore a little bit more HP using his Black Sludge, and here we have it, people, the pinnacle of perfection. Right here, my favorite Pokemon of all time. Alana used it especially just for me, Gengar. Don't ask me why I love Gengar, he's purple, I love purple, he's just like that little dude that you always want by your side. So anyways, Gengar is on the field, uh, Matt's gonna go ahead and withdraw his Crobat and send out a Typhlosion, which is not the world's greatest thing for Gengar. I hope Gengar can pull through on this one. Gengar uses a Thunderbolt and almost, almost takes out that Typhlosion. Typhlosion is still hanging in there, just barely in the red zone. Typhlosion's gonna go ahead and use a Flamethrower and take out my... Precious, precious Gengar. It brings a tear to my eye to see Gengar go like that, but I was happy that he was involved in the video to begin with. Lana's gonna go ahead and send out her Bouffalant as we saw from before. is gonna lead with another Flamethrower. Can he get the same luck from Gengar as he did on Bouffalant? Not quite. Uh, it wasn't enough to actually knock out Bouffalant, but it did take away a nice chunk of health from him. Bouffalant does, however, take out Typhlosion. Typhlosion is now eliminated from this equation. Matthew's gonna send out his Crobat yet again. It's like Crobat is just hanging in there just barely. He's chilling in the red zone again. Uh, the speed behind him as well, you, you've seen it before, but the speed's gonna play in his favor as well. Again with an Air Slash, taking out Bouffalant, similar to the way they took out Zeep Striker once more. And he uh, heals himself again using that Black Sludge. Crobat is uh, definitely the rock of uh, Matthew's team in this situation. But Alana's gonna go ahead and send out her Altaria and uh, Air Slash just wasn't enough this time around. Uh, Altaria is going to ultimately wrap up this battle with a Dragon Claw. Crobat just couldn't withstand that hit no matter how much Black Sludge you got on your side. It just wasn't enough. So, anyways, I hope you all enjoyed. We've seen everything from Braviary to Gengar. I loved commentating this. Make sure you check out Matt LP's adventure in the description below. Thank you to Elena for letting me do this. This was a lot of fun. I've never done anything like this before. And, uh, yeah. There you have it, people. Anyways, <laughs> you know me, YouTube. Nappy Boy 92. Uh, I'm out.